Welcome to our journey through innovative design with the BeBear plugin for Grasshopper. Today, we're constructing a non-orthogonal tent-like structure, where the beauty of parametric design truly shines. In front of us, we have a tent composed of two triangular top faces and two rectangular bottom faces, a geometric harmony that's more complex than it appears. The red brackets you see are the substructure, meticulously designed to secure the edges where standard right angles don't exist. They're not just functional, they're the hidden guides that maintain the integrity of our structure. This tutorial will walk you through how BeBear's intelligent design assists in the creation of these essential substructure. Let's get started. Our first task is to bring our tense mesh from Rhino into the Grasshopper environment. Here, we'll employ BeBear to transform this mesh into a planar poly surface, or PPS. This step is crucial, it's where we ensure our design's foundation is as robust as it is in our imaginations. A successful conversion to PPS hinges on the mesh being valid, with all polygons planar. If everything checks out, our PPS springs to life, ready for the intricate process of joinery that lies ahead. It's essential to understand the orientation of our mesh faces, whether they face outward, inward, or are non-uniform. To guarantee precision in our design, we'll use Rhino's Show Directions command to check the normals of our mesh faces. With our mesh faces confirmed to be outward-looking, we opt for a negative shell in BeBear. This will thicken our faces in the reverse direction of their normals. We also set our material thickness in millimeters, aligning with BeBear's internal unit system for seamless integration and accuracy in the fabrication process. As we progress, selecting the right joint type becomes paramount. For this demonstration, we've chosen the miter joint. Interestingly, we'll employ the orthogonal option within BeBear to ensure our parts are cut at precise right angles along their edges. To enhance visualization, we'll introduce a small gap between the parts. Remember, the choice is yours, the BeBear plugin flexibly accommodates various joint types and thicknesses to match your design needs. It's time to bring all the pieces together. We'll start by creating an assembly component in Grasshopper. This is where BeBear's intelligence really shines. The assembly component is a comprehensive repository holding all information about our parts, joints, and nodes, orchestrating the entire assembly. To materialize the individual components of our design, we employ the disassemble component. By feeding our assembly into disassemble, it breaks down the structure into its fundamental elements. Now, we have a clear path to each part, joint, and node of our BeBear assembly, ready to be further manipulated or sent straight to fabrication. Now, let's bring our design to life. To visualize the output from the disassemble component, we tap into BeBear's specialized components. For the parts, we'll use shell geometry, which reveals the actual geometry and additional information. For clarity in our workspace, we'll add Grasshopper's custom preview component. To focus solely on our progress, we'll hide the previews of all other components, leaving only the parts visible in the Rhino viewport. With a clear view, we examine our structure. If all appears as intended, we're ready to move forward and construct the substructure that will underpin our design. In our next step, we'll focus on the substructure that's key to our assembly, the edge support system. This clever design uses guide brackets to connect parts along the edges, ensuring everything holds together seamlessly. To find this, we'll navigate to the Substructure category in BeBear and select Edge Support System. Creating a substructure begins with comprehensive knowledge of our assembly. That's why the Edge Support System within BeBear demands various inputs, the first and foremost being the assembly itself. This input is pivotal as it carries the entire blueprint of our design, dictating how the substructure will integrate with the overall form. Continuing to the next crucial step, we will specify our bracket, the linchpin of the edge support system. Currently, B 
BeBear offers one bracket type for this purpose. Locate the Construct Edge Support component to define our bracket's parameters. To ensure our bracket meets the exact needs of our structure, the Construct Edge Support component requires us to meticulously define three key dimensions, the length, depth, and thickness. Picture the bracket as an L-shaped connector, embracing the edges of our parts. The length is how far it extends from the edge, the depth is how far it reaches across the adjoining parts, and the thickness is how wide it spans along the edge itself. Providing precise values for these dimensions is non-negotiable. With the dimension set, the Construct Edge Support component generates a 2D edge support object, ready for integration. Feeding this object into the Edge Support System component is a pivotal moment. Now equipped with all necessary data, it crafts a new assembly based on our initial design, but with an added layer of support. By passing this new assembly through the Disassemble component, we can visualize the precise locations where the brackets interlock with the parts, the pockets. To visualize our brackets in detail, we introduce the Deconstruct Edge Support component. It takes the edge supports created by the edge support system and constructs the geometry for each bracket within our assembly. But it doesn't stop there, it goes further, offering a wealth of fabrication information. This includes the specific plane of each bracket and labels of the engaged parts, among other crucial details. As we tweak the parameters of the 2D edge connector, Observe how the brackets dynamically adapt to these changes, a testament to BeBear's interactive and responsive design capabilities. But what if we want to control the brackets' distribution? The Edge Support System component allows us to fine-tune the number and spacing of these connectors. By setting the count parameter to zero, the system considers the spacing values, offering even more customization. However, as we build this intricate edge support system, collisions may occur, like the ones here. To resolve such issues and learn how to adjust parameters for individual edges, stay tuned for our next tutorial, where we'll delve deeper into optimizing our edge supports for collision-free designs. Thank you for watching this tutorial on the BeBear plugin for Grasshopper. Your journey in mastering parametric joinery and innovative design doesn't end here. Subscribe to our channel for more insights, tips, and advanced tutorials, and join a community passionate about pushing the boundaries of design technology. Your feedback, questions, and shared experiences are invaluable, so feel free to comment below.